I'm currently experiencing a nosebleed. Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Pretty good. I blew my nose a little too hard. This has happened to me ever since uh, I was a young boy and my brother John bashed me over the nose with a baseball bat. Thanks for that, John. So I don't think I'm going to stop bleeding anytime soon, so the show must go on. Tonight on the show, we're going to teach you how to make taco rice. That's right, this is a Japanese taco rice. It is uh, popular in Okinawa and its origins, I think, are in the 1980s where U.S. military personnel were stationed in the area and a uh, aspiring businessman was like, oh, I want to feed those nice Americans things that they like. So taco rice was born. It is basically a taco on top of rice, but I will show you some of the, uh, the pointers or like the things that make it a little bit different and we'll talk about it. But also I just wanted to eat it. This is like the perfect kind of dish where it's like, yes, that does appeal to what I like to eat, which is tacos. We eat tacos, you know, about probably two times a week around here. Okay, like many dishes of this nature, we will start with the rice. I went out and bought sushi rice today for this purpose. So we will have the basically correct rice. I'm gonna make one and a half cups of rice today. If I get a little weird, it's uh, definitely not because I'm Bleeding from the head right now. I do feel a little lightheaded, but that's that's normal when your nose is bleeding I would like to, to tell everyone like I legitimately am okay. It's not a big deal All right, the way to make this rice good is you rinse that rice many times So let's do that. You get in one of these and you dump and you get some more in there and You shake it and I'm looking for that water to start being more clear as it comes off Okay, I think I washed that rice about like eight times now sushi rice enjoys a one-to-one -one water ratio, which means for a cup and a half of rice, we'll use a cup and a half of water. Now you might actually need a little bit more than that, particularly at larger volumes. However, what you'll notice is there's still some water in there even after I strained it. So that should be our good enough. Okay, we'll get that heated up on the back burner and uh, that'll just cook while we're doing everything else. Okay, onwards and upwards. So, I looked at um, several different recipes for this dish and uh, probably the most common was almost quite literally authentic Tex-Mex ground beef tacos on rice. Got some nice birds in my bird feeder right now. So I didn't want to make it that way even though I know it would be good because I thought it would be too on the nose as it were. So, I found some other uh, recipes that I think are like probably more similar to how it was done in the 80s in Japan, which is we're making a ketchup sauce for the meat. And that's a, that's a thing in Japan. And you can, I, I can see the joy on John's face where he's like, mmm, Japanese ketchup sauce. <laughs> that is what's for dinner. So we're gonna make our sauce. And it starts with ketchup. And we're gonna do a two to two to one ratio of ketchup, sake, and soy sauce. So if you wanted to do tablespoons, for example, that would be appropriate. So here's one tablespoon of ketchup and another. This sake has been in my fridge for probably a thousand years at this point. There's one sake, two sake, but I only use it in cooking and we'll cook this, so no problem. Soy sauce. I have low sodium because that's what I grabbed at the grocery store, but you don't have to use that. Especially because the recipe I'm vaguely referencing says add some salt. So let's go ahead and do that. Put that sodium back in there. We'll just do a pinch of salt. And with a wee spatula, we'll mix this up. Golly, I wish I had used a bigger bowl. Because look at that attractive color. Okay. I like it. The old familiar taste. Okay, uh, over here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat up a pan. It's a nonstick pan, it's a big one. And while that's heating up, I'm gonna make a, a salsa, uh, kind of like a pico topping. But I'm gonna do it in the, like through the Japanese lens from based on the recipes that I, that I viewed. Which is, this is a very simple tomato topping. You can actually just use just tomatoes. It's just 
would be fine. But if you want to get a little fancy with it, what we're going to do is we're going to chop up some nice tomatoes. These are Campari cocktail tomatoes or, or delights. I really like these year round. I think they are like a tomato that is nice and ripe even in the, the non-seasonal times. And we're just going to toss this with a little bit of onion and some cilantro and some lemon juice. And for whatever reason, almost every recipe I saw uh, used lemon juice. So I don't know if limes exist in Japan, but we're going to use lemon juice because that's what I kept seeing. And so it'll be like a very fresh tomato topic and I think it'll be quite nice. All right, we've got our onion. We're using a red onion and we're going to use this in two, two parts. All right, my eyes are burning from that onion, goddamn. Let's go ahead and get some cilantro in here. We love cilantro. And even with one nostril completely plugged, I can smell how wonderful this smells. It says yummy, yummy, put me in your tummy. And there's that. And our limon, which I will just squeeze straight in there. And we'll just leave that out to marinate until we mix it up. And we'll crack, we'll crack some salt on it. Crack some salt on it. This is pink salt that I can't and grind, my hands are too slippery. Your salt, sir. Let's mix that up with the soy sauce spoon. And that will be our delightful topping for this dish, our garnish, as it were. Just about as simple as can be, but it does taste lovely. All right, now we're gonna work with this other part of the onion. The amount of onion you use is up to you, but I'm just gonna use the other quarter because this is a pretty large onion. So I want some onion in my beef mince. But I don't need much more than that, really. But if you like, you're like, oh, I gotta use the whole onion. That's fine, you can do that. So over here, we're gonna get some oil heating up. This is just vegetable oil. That pan is plenty hot. Go ahead and sizzle the onions. And while that's sizzling, we'll uh, mince up some garlic. So we'll trim, trim the little ass off the garlic, also known as the foot of the garlic. And we'll crush, and we'll mince that up. And I, uh, for one, I kind of like big pieces of garlic. So I don't really worry about mincing it up too finely, but if you got someone who's sensitive to that, you can accommodate their preference, or you can choose to not accommodate their preference, which uh, if you're cooking for them, you know, they should be grateful. All right, so we'll let that sizzle. Now here's, a, here's something funny, I thought would be funny. So we're gonna have ground beef for this dish. And I was rummaging through my freezer, freezer and I couldn't find uh, ground beef. I'm sure I have, but I got tired of digging. So instead we're gonna use burgers. That's right, they're ground beef patties, which are actually just ground beef in patty form. But I thought this would make it like 50% more American if we just cooked burgers. And uh, hey, guess what, by the way, uh, if you chop up burgers, it becomes ground beef. So it's kind of like um, we're getting the best, the best of both worlds in that it is one, ground meat, so familiar to the taco guzzlers of Tex-Mex land, but two, it's in gonna, it's gonna be in like kind of square bite-sized pieces as if it was not ground meat. It's like we ground the meat and then unground it. How cool is that? Okay, here's my chopped up burgers. I would like to take this moment to say I'm proud to be an American, or at least I know I'm free, and I won't, uh, I won't forget the burgers who died for this dish. And I'm just gonna say right now, it needs more oil. We'll give it a little bit of salt, even though uh, there's salt in the sauce I'm gonna put on it. Kinda forgot about that, but you don't have to know that. And we're gonna cook this up. Look at those little bite-sized pieces. Kinda nice. I bet it'll be easier to eat with chopsticks. Nice sized pieces. Okay, now we are gonna season this. And if you want, you can just use taco seasoning. It'd be fine. I mean, it actually would be very good. We know taco seasoning is good. But because I'm using that Japanese sauce instead. I'm just gonna use some chili powder. That's gonna that's gonna take us to the Mexico land. But if you really wanted to like stay in the Japanese lane, for example, you know, uh, sashimi togarashi actually I think would be a nice seasoning. So we're gonna brown that just like you would tacos. We'll be back. I'm gonna check my nose and maybe I can stop looking like a, a dingus. See you soon. Look at my nice pieces of beef. They look nice. It looks a little greasy, but I don't care. So here's our, here's our sauce. My immediate impression is like, maybe it's not enough sauce. Now maybe it'll all mix together. And what we're gonna do in the interim, or really our goal is we want this to be wet, but not too soupy. So we're gonna hope that that reduces down a little bit. And you know, there's like certainly some sugars in the ketchup, for example, so it should be, should be nice. So we'll just keep, let that keep cooking. I'll let my dog out. Okay, I'm happy with my meat. You can see we've got a nice, a nice swoss. Uh, I did give this a little taste and it tastes a lot like a, a meatloaf. 
which I imagine could make someone very nostalgic if that's what they were into. So I got some iceberg lettuce here. There it is. And there's a couple of options with the, the iceberg. You can either garnish the outside of the dish with this, but more commonly I see it just plopped right on top. Kind of depends on how sensitive you are about the texture of iceberg. Because if you put this on a plate of hot food, it will wilt. So it won't be quite as crunchy. You can see I try to do kind of like a fine shred there. And that's quite nice. All right, here's our rice. It's looking nice. If you wanted to season this, you could. You could add some sushi vinegar, for example, but it's looking good to me. Nice and fluffy, pretty sticky. So let's finish this up. So we will take our plate and we will get a nice layer of rice. The rice is important because it will be the vehicle which will absorb all of the fatty, <laughs> beefy, beefiness that we're gonna plop right on top. So there's our rice base. We'll go ahead and add a healthy, amount of our taco meat, which looks fabulously retro and vaguely steak-like, you know? Like, like vaguely. Can't believe it's not steak. Okay, and next up, we're gonna add taco cheese. So I'm just using Mexican cheese, but it's whatever cheese you got. We're gonna add that directly to the meat so that it can melt a little bit. So we'll just do a little bit, like so. And I think I'm gonna do lettuce on the outside so as to avoid super wilty lettuce. We're just gonna do kind of like an outside layer, trying not to overdo it on the lettuce, which there's no such thing for me personally, but I think that will be aesthetically pleasing. The rice is gone. That's true, it is. And we will top it with our pico, which you can either bundle on the top, maybe we'll do kind of a little bit on the outside, spread out. Just a little bit. And other things you can do is you can garnish this with some tortilla chips. Just a few. So we'll just do a couple on the outside. Other additions, you could do guacamole. You could add sour cream. We do have sour cream hanging out. Based on how I played it, you cannot tell that there is rice there now. But it is quite nice. Maybe I will add a little blob of sour cream just for fun. Just a little sour cream for fun. So aesthetic. Yeah, it looks terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. We'll give it a try here. Okay, so I already know I will like this because I've never met a taco I don't. But here's rice, meat, etc. It's super good. It's so good. It um the I was telling John like the the sauce we applied to the meat reminds me of meatloaf, which should kind of make sense. Like you think about like meatloaf flavors of ketchup and Worcestershire sauce are probably most common. Super, super tasty and it goes really good with the rice, which kind of picks up the grease from everything we put on top of it. The cheese actually melts it quite nicely. I could get down on this. It's like taco salad on rice, basically, with a couple of you know nice Japanese flavors added. Give it a thumbs up. I'm gonna smash this. Good stuff. So, that's how we did it today. I actually do think this would benefit from legitimate taco seasoning as well, but it's just fine how it is. And I hope that you enjoyed this show. I'm glad my nose is no longer bleeding. And we'll see you next time, PGC. Toodaloo.